Welcome back to Inside Personal Growth. This is Greg Voice and the host of Inside Personal Growth. And joining us from London, England, is Lalamini De Silva and her partner, Michelle Burke, joining us from Los Angeles. Now, where are you? You're just a little north of Los Angeles, right? Yeah, I'm in the valley. In the valley. In the valley, as they say. <laughs> and we're going to be talking with these ladies this morning about two things. We'll blend it together. You get twice for this interview. One is about these joy cards that they have uh, just released. Um, this is a Beyond Words release, um, this one. And we'll also integrate in here the 15-minute pause because you can't get one without the other. Let's face it. It's, it's all kind of a blended thing. So but the joy cards are really interesting. And I want to let our listeners know inside this box here, all these joy cards, but also a great guidebook. Um, and we're going to be asking them some questions from the guidebook and also from the cards themselves. And we'll be weaving in 15 minute pauses for everybody. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> um, and let me just give you a little bit of background um, about both of our um, uh, people that are speaking with us, I should say authors and card, because Lilamini actually uh, designed all the cards. And um, so she's quite the artist. That is a part of her input. Um, but Michelle is a highly respected and sought after leadership team strategist, coach and speaker. Uh, as founder and president of the Energy Catalyst Group, which is where all of you can go to learn more about Lilamini and Michelle, is energycatalystgroup.com. Uh, she's been consulting and training companies on well-being. She's devoted 20-year career to helping individuals, teams, and organizations ship unproductive attitudes and behaviors that get in the way of thriving and so energizing the workplace and life. And when you go there, you'll see she's got lots of partners as well. And Lenominee de Silva has a master's in biochemistry and papers in psychology from University Otago in New Zealand. Uh, her eclectic career has spanned across different industries, including media relations and film production. She was a clinical audit facilitator at Hammersmith Hospital for many years. A course in public relations led to PR role in London Zoo. Her keen knowledge of zoo world and background in analysts uh, launched a new career as a researcher, then at AP in production of natural history documentaries. And you're probably thinking, how did this woman get to designing these cards? Well, because she likes to do a lot of different things. That's the main thing. So let me, this first question is for both of you, and you each can respond. Um, if you would, tell a little about the formation of your partnership, I think, which would be a foundation for this as well as why you both decided to write these joy cards. And I can only guess it was right in the middle of the pandemic, as you guys mentioned in the book. We all needed a little more joy then, and we all need even more joy now. So uh, tell us a little bit about that. Who wants to go first? Well, I can. Okay. <laughs> um, we met in Seattle, Washington. I, I really believe it was sort of a serendipitous meeting. Um, I was filming at the time uh, for the Discovery Channel and Michelle was um, a keynote speaker for uh, the Worldwide Conference uh, with Microsoft. And a friend introduced us and that's it. That's history. I mean, we ever since then, what, it's been over 20 years, hasn't it, Michelle? Yeah. Yeah. 20 long years. No, 20 great years. We've had and a Michelle, strong friendship. <laughs> what about you, Michelle? What would you say about this partnership? I, I would say, yeah, Lalamini, certainly that was exactly how we met. And I think it's it's grown over the years. You know, we when we started out, it was, you know, we we knew that we had some things in common. And we also shared a common purpose that we both wanted to make a difference in the world. And we, we did it from different perspectives. You know, we had different backgrounds and, and different perspectives, but we shared a similar purpose and philosophy in life. And I think that really helped us create the various products that we've created, including the joy cards. Well, let's talk about these joy cards. You know, we have 
probably more female listeners than males. And usually males, you know, it's like, oh, joy cards. Why do I want to have a joy card with a nice picture on it? Um, I think that's just the male side. But, you know, Hay House has been putting out cards like these for a long time. I think both of us talked about this last time we're on the show. And I've always bought cards or decks that I really liked. And I'm going to for my listeners because I think it's really important to actually show them a couple of the cards. Um, this That's the guidebook. So there it is. And Lalami, great work on the artwork on these cards, by the way. Oh, so you. this is a judgment-free day card. And there's the other side. So you have a beautiful picture. So you could read this and like stick it right in front of your computer or on your board or whatever you wanted to do. But the point is, is to use these cards, right? So yeah. speak with us, if you would, about, um, you had a part in here from notes from the creators that life's little pressures and acts of kindness is evolving practice wherever we go. Uh, fortunately, joy gems are everywhere. If we look for them, right? And I think the key is this reminds us to look for them. The cards remind you to look for them. Speak about having a judgment-free day. I just told you guys a minute ago, we're in the midst of, I was ranting about these shootings and I was definitely creating a judgment, wasn't I? Um, and as little Lomini <laughs> said, well, sometimes you have to do that. <laughs> um, but give us your judgment-free day first card in the deck and a way to shift our perspective and experience for more joy in our lives. You know, it I think um, in terms of joy gems, I'll just go into that little a little bit. So joy gems are what we coined the phrase over a period of time. Uh, what they mean are the simple pleasures in life. I mean, it's the very, the, the everyday things that we miss because we're too busy and we haven't had a chance to stop and really think about things like, for example, you know, um, tasting your coffee. Michelle Spick talks about tasting her coffee. I don't drink coffee, but tasting my tea. Every English person has a cup of tea. Um, and just making the time to do that or observing bees, you know, buzzing around flowers, simple, simple everyday things. And we just wanted people to appreciate that, you know, we can miss those things if we're, because we're too busy most of the time. So Michelle, you know, look, you spend a lot of your time in corporate America. Um, I would yes. think that these would be really perfect on everybody's desk, you know, or even if they're at home, right? Because a lot yeah. of people are working from home these days and you're getting on Zoom calls like we are here as well. Um, what is the, what do you think could happen as a result of individuals working inside of corporations, team building, utilize these joy cards? Well, it's, it's interesting that you, you bring that up, Greg, because actually I've heard now from a few different people that they are putting the joy cards on their desk and their coworkers are coming into their office every day to pick a card. And now they're having an actual conversation because they're going and doing the activity. Different people are coming in at different times and pulling a card and reading it out loud and then looking in the booklet to see what it means and what the health benefits are. And just having that conversation is spreading joy. You know, you're talking about something joyful and now they're going and trying it out and, and then coming back and sharing what they experienced. And to me, just even shifting that and integrating that type of a conversation into your workday is like a huge shift in the way that we look at work because most of us go into our office, whether it's at home or, or into a, a, an office at work, and we're you know, we're tunnel vision, you know, we're check, 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 check all our to-dos. So many people aren't even taking lunch, right? We get caught up. And like what Lalami was saying about the joy gems, taking those moments, just a moment out of the day, a pause. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> Love that. Yes, that is the word. <laughs> taking a pause to, to actually have those moments and appreciate those moments of joy. And, and that Everybody deserves that. I think we've we well, lost sight of that. You you hit something, and I'm going to take this off in a different little direction here, but it, it's okay. Um, you know, I recently 
did an interview with Marshall Goldsmith on his new book called The Earned Life. And on one end of the continuum, he has joy. And on the other end, he has what he's calling are the meaningful things, your purpose in life, your meaning in life, happiness. And let's talk about happiness for a second, because joy and happiness go together. You know, he has all these achievers, which you work with, Michelle, and you both work with. And these achievers, no matter what happened, he said, would come in and they would say, well, you know, I got the PhD, I got a double PhD, I invented something, it made me tens of millions of dollars, and he's coaching some of the top people in the world, right? Uh, I have a beautiful house, yet they had so many regrets and no joy and no happiness. They had no time for happiness. Um, it was like, it, it eluded them, you know? And you know what he did speak about, which I was interesting, going to uh, address with you guys, is kind of this concept, which I didn't even know Marshall did this, is about impermanence, right, and non-attachment. It's a Buddhist concept. Yes. But, you know, when you want to have joy, and this is the question, uh, Sikamar Rao says, you have to choose happiness. You have to choose it first, right? It's not something that it doesn't happen unless you choose to have it. What would you say? Because joy and happiness to me are kind of the same thing. Are these co are these supposed to bring awareness so that we choose joy? You know, I actually think it, it, it yes, and I would say that they're, uh, it's a pathway. It's a tool to and and it gives you permission to experience and bring joy back into your life or rediscover what brings you joy or bring more joy into your life and so yes it definitely brings awareness because if you are engaging with the cards you're learning right and you're trying possibly something new or maybe you're doing something that you haven't done in a really long time like the lamini and i discovered when we were challenging each other during when we were creating these cards and that in and of itself brings joy. Well, what I like about these cards, and again, I'm not going to belabor this for the listeners, but you don't, you can go anywhere in the deck, pull a card out, stick it up there. And in less than 30 seconds, read the, the statement and turn it over and look at the beautiful artwork. And I think just that in of itself, because, you know, people say, well, do you want to read another book? And you're going like, I don't need to, I don't want to read a whole book. What can I do in the moment right now to shift my attitude, to shift my emotions? And I think that's what these cards do, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and like you say, it can be, and joy is a choice. It is a choice. But sometimes we do need reminding and, you know, these cards are a reminder and it's a very quick and easy way of changing, like you say, a mood, because there are lots of health benefits associated with each, each card, you know, um, you can, you can lower stress because sometimes when we stress the cortisol levels are so high that right. we can't even get back to the, back to normal. So with a quick positive vibe or a different mindset, it can be done, you know, and with a little gratitude or changing your mind and going outside and looking at things that you're curious about. It can make a whole lot of difference. Like we well, these, these, you guys have your backgrounds in science. So the oxytocin actually can get released as a result of these joy cards, right? So yeah, that so reduces. A lot of happy hormones. <laughs> well, but I mean, when you look in your, your adrenal glands and what's actually being uh, on the top of your kidney, right? Yeah. That's where it's coming from. But what happens is when you go into flight, fight, or freeze, which is that other state, um, mm -hmm. because that's the limbic side, right? We're yeah. virtually not doing that. We're getting more cortisol, right? And the cortisol is blocking the ability to produce the oxytocin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, know right? what you mean. I don't and know if that's a correct scientific approach to this, but what I'm saying is Fundamentally, my listeners get it. Um, you, you, if you go into that mode versus picking up one of these cards and just putting it in front of you and choosing joy, right? Yes. Even if you're going to just choose joy for the next half an hour until the next phone call comes, then pick up another one, right? Or 
whatever. That's the way to do it. But you mentioned the guidebook that joy cards act as a catalyst to spark fun in unexpected ways and are long-term solutions for managing stress and anxiety, which we just talked about. Speak about the joy card, remembering happy memories and how this act shifts our mood. I, it's something that I don't think people do often enough. It's like, we're always on to the next. It's always about the next. You know, I say yesterday was a canceled check. Tomorrow's a promissory note. The only thing that you really have is now, right? So if we did live our lives this way, which in the Western world, I think it's the Western disease, right? Um, it, we could have a lot more joy. So what about remembering happy memories? Who wants to address that? Well, I think that I think that's a great example. You know, one of the many examples of how quickly we can get back to a joyful place. You know, if we take a moment and remember something, a happy memory that we've had when we were a child or, or, or an adult and reliving that moment in our memory again, helps release those happy hormones. And so it immediately makes us feel good. It's like listening to music. If you, if you hear a, a song that, that reminds you of, of a happy time, you immediately have a smile on your face. You can't help it. Like if you're even telling a story about a, a happy memory, Greg, you immediately get a smile on your face when you're telling it. Your, your, your vocal voice changes into a much more positive place. And so those are things that everybody can do. And, and much like the joy jumps that Lalamani was talking about earlier, those things are small and yet they have a huge difference and they don't take much time and they don't cost anything. And that's the one thing that I think we're really wanting people to understand is that these joy cards allow you to have access to joy, right? To bring joy into your life without having to think that you have to spend hours of your day or spend millions of dollars to do it. And it's technology free, meaning yeah. it's, it's not something on your iPad. It's not something on your iPhone. It's not something on your Android device or your tablet. It's actually a physical card, um, yeah. which you know, to, some people say that's kind of old school. Why didn't they digitize them, right? There's a <laughs> reason why you didn't digitize them because the tacticalness of actually holding a card and reading something, I think is really important. And I, I don't want to sound old fashioned here, but the reality is that is your intent behind this, I would assume, right? Yes. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You can see yeah. it, you can touch it, you can feel it. And, you, and, the, and the four areas are really important as well because it's mind, body, heart, and soul. So we, we divided it into those areas so that people could, if they wanted to concentrate on the mind, because then, you know, if your mind is hyperactive or overactive and you need it calm, there are cards that can do that for you, like the happy memories, and you can slow it down. Or you have the heart connection, you know, heart, so you can connect and reconnect with people. It's just a reminder of, and, and your body, you know, you need to move your body, you love gardening and the things that you might have forgotten to do and just go back to again. So it's just a reminder and it's a very positive reminder. Well, you know, it, people will say, well, we live in a complicated world. We only live in a complicated world because we make it so. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, if you literally shut out the media and shut off the things and grew in your garden, like you just talked about and did things that way, which it almost feels like sometimes people are out of reach with it. You know, it's like, hey, I can't, I, I can't get there because everything's moving so fast. And I think this is intentionally designed to slow you down, um, to take a deep breath. Um, let's talk about the wellness elements of this. You mentioned that the joy cards are based on research that you conducted specifically in the areas of positive psychology, health, and well-being. Can you speak about the scientific studies that prove that stimulating joyful feelings stimulates the neurotransmitters, which we were just kind of just talking about, but, you know, I don't know who wants to address that. Is that you, Michelle? Uh, sure. Or is uh, that, uh, well, is that Lalamini? <laughs> well, I, think we, I think we both could be speaking to that. I know that one of the reports that I spent a lot of time 
uh, researching is the Stress in America report. It comes out every year. It's been coming out for decades. And certainly in the last few years in particular, stress levels are at an all-time high, which is no surprise given everything that's been going on. And, and understanding what the impact is on our physical, mental, and emotional, and psychological being uh, is enormous. And so an example of gratitude, there's been so much research just on gratitude alone to show that by just the simple act of being genuinely grateful will release dopamine and serotonin in your brain immediately. And actually that brings your, that cortisol level down and actually makes you feel better. And each of the cards were intentional in that way that Lalam and I were looking at. We were like, what is that? What is the wellness benefit of doing this particular activity? What, how is it going to help you in, in that way? Because we, we want everybody to feel and experience more joy and we want them to actually feel, <laughs> feel it like inside, because that's, that's where it will shift your life in a really positive way. If you, if you're willing, right? Like that choice piece that you talked about earlier, Greg, choosing it is a big part of, and being willing to try it out, to tr just try it each day. One little thing. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It could be a small thing. Great. Being grateful takes no time at all. You know, I start right. my day and end my day with gratitude. Um, writing a, ha a handwritten note to somebody, just the act of writing it out and sending it or giving it to somebody actually helps you. <laughs> Look what I kept. Look what I kept. <laughs> Is that my, oh my gosh, that's my oh, card too. Your handwritten you. note with that's your right. signature <laughs> and the 15 minute pause on it. So, oh, that's fantastic. That just shows that your cards work. Now, I would say that, you know, we're all, all day long, given a certain amount of energy. Your company is called the Energy Catalyst Group. It's about the focus of that energy and the ability. What I would say, and I'm going to ask you this question, do you see that when people work with these cards, whether, you, whether it was just the two of you or you have more research than this, that they found that they were more energized, that they were more inspired. Um, I use inspired instead of motivated because to me, inspiration comes from within. Um, it's a spiritual kind of experience. And I think these cards are designed for all those who are my spiritual listeners, which there's lots of them. It, it is about bringing that connection to a higher self. Uh, to making that connection. Either of you want to comment on that? Or did I just yeah, leave you? I, 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 I just leave you? It's like, there was a lot. <laughs> I know. I, well, I agree with you, Greg. I mean, I, I think that when Lalamani and I were creating these cards, we were really looking at how do you help people cultivate it from the inside out? Because mm -hmm. otherwise it won't last. And, and that's why we call it a joy journey, because it is a practice, right? Like it is a choice that we have to make for ourselves and say, yeah, I deserve this. I want more of it in my life. I want to feel more joyful. And I think that in that in and of itself, <laughs> just doing that act alone is, is uh, well, it's, it's a positive thing. But the thing that you talked about, the energy, it does energize us and energy is contagious like right. it and so is joy and so joy carries that positive energy right and so if you're feeling joyful then that's gonna that's gonna impact other people that you're around when you walk in the door and you're in a great mood or something positive happened or you you just smelled the roses on your walk back from like I do with my dog JD and I'm like smiling and happy about it all, you know, I, whoever I'm going to be interacting with next is going to get the benefit of that, <laughs> you know? Exactly. So I think it's, I think we don't realize that when we feel joyful, moms out there who have kids, when you're in a good place and you're feeling positive, that impact directly your children, you know, they see it and feel it. In fact, in our research, Lalam, do you remember that, with it, that the research about the moms who are really stressed out? And the one thing that kids, when, when 
kids were being asked about their moms and what was mm-hmm. one wish that they wanted from, from their moms, their, their kids' response was they would like to see their moms be less stressed and more joyful. Yeah. It's not more, you know, it wasn't more money or more time. It was actually less stress because it definitely yeah. influences them and their lives. And I definitely think joy just makes our busy day better. And the more the more joy you have, the dopamine cycle is a reinforcement cycle. So the yeah. more you do, the better it is because the more you want to do. And it's just getting into a practice and a rhythm, really, and changing some habits a little bit. Well, this is this is my listener's investment into wellness, right? Yes. Look, you guys can buy a Peloton. You can go do yoga. You can run on the beach. You can walk in the woods. You can do whatever you want physically. This is a mental health card. Um, And Mm -hmm. when your mental health is better, everything else is better. Um, So that's my my plug, one of the plugs. Now the guidebook, you speak about the different ways that we can use the joy cards and Lamini, you started talking about it. Can you talk about the use of the category of the cards in the mind, the heart, the body, and the soul? Because we literally, now you have those four categories. Um, and the last one I was speaking about soul is the direct connection to spirituality. That's so perfect. speak I guess, Lalamini, this question's for you, Michelle, it's for you too, but um, you want to start, Lalamini? Well, I mean, each and, each and every one of those areas is quite important to make you more rounded, really, emotionally, mentally, and physically. You need, you need it to be balanced all, all the way around. So I think if one area is out of, out of sync, then it can affect the others as well. So they're pretty much integrated. But um, the soul, obviously, soul is very important. It's, again, what's inside. So building your strength from the inside out. Um, It's about self-worth and and loving yourself, really. And that's where it starts, I think. Um, I think you mentioned a very important thing, and that's Um, self-love. You know, if if I have a bunch of regret in my life, I probably don't have a lot of self-love because I'm regretting things that I didn't do or could have been or whatever. But if I'm on purpose and I have meaning and I have joy and I have happiness in my life, there's a good possibility that all those chemicals we were talking about that need to be released are being released regularly. And I'm feeling a lot better about the world, my life and the people around me. Yeah. So absolutely. Tell yourself you love yourself every day and then that'll change as well. (laughs) Yeah. No you matter. Know, it's, it's a matter of convincing yourself, like you say, you know, fake it till you make it. But again, it's it's that sort of a thing. But um, the more things you do and the more uh, more you give yourself, you know, positive reinforcement, really, the more likely you're you're going to really appreciate the person you are because you see yourself in the mirror every day and you are the only person you can truly, truly rely on, probably. <laughs> So, and you've been there all the all the way, all through your journey. So, uh, self love is so very important, really. Well, physical wellness is is starts with the mental wellness, and you know, because it's so difficult for people to get inspired to go do what they need to do if they're not there, right? But what <laughs> I was saying is that the when when we're adjusted mentally and emotionally and spiritually. It allows us to go after the physical with what with much more fervor. Um, you know, in the United States, and I'm sure Michelle, you know this because you're in the wellness side of things, and both of you, um, you know, we're kind of epidemic proportions on diabetes, you know, on overweight. Uh, England's got its own problem with overweight. So does New Zealand now. So does Australia. Um, but to do those kind of things that help us release that weight, which is being okay with ourselves, number one, first, so that we have the energy to then go do the jog or whatever it is we need to do, or to have the portion control and still feel good about ourselves, whatever it might be. So Michelle, can you address that? Because these cards, I think, actually are the first part to start for wellness. 
I, I love, yeah, I, I agree in terms of uh, it's a great place if you're, if you're needing some support around shifting in that, in that area, whether it is physically or mentally or emotionally. I, I do believe that these cards are the instigator. You know, they're, they're a great way to spark uh, your mind shifting so that you can do something different. We, it's hard to make a, a better decision for ourselves if we're making it from the same place that we've been stressed in. So we have to find a way to relieve that stress long enough to make a healthier decision for ourselves. And these cards really are a way of, of helping people do that. And I think if you can mentally, I, and we've got a big mental health here, problem here, Greg, as you well know. I mean, that's <clears throat> it's gone up tremendously given the pandemic. And so being able to help people find moments where they can have more clarity and clarity, meaning that the brain chemistry has shifted so that it can be more positive, that okay. allows them to think more clearly for them to be able to go, oh, I do need to go out and take that walk. I can do that. My card says, take a walk today. I can do that. Even if it's just for 10 minutes, it doesn't matter. It's the, the act of getting out there and then doing that thing for even 10 minutes will, will shift the brain chemistry to help. And then it has a longer effect, right? It has the, it stays, it doesn't just snap back. And that, that allows you then some momentum, hopefully. And we also encourage, this is why Lalamini and I did this together, is that it really helps if you have a buddy to do it with, if you can whether it's over Zoom. Remember, Lalamini and I live in two different countries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we were able to do, we were able to support each other and still continue to support each other to this day and challenge each other to get out of our doldrums, to, to, to shake things up, to shift things. And I'm not saying it's easy. This is not like a, you know, snap your finger and woo, all of a sudden everybody gets to feel more joyful. It, it is, however, a real way a tool. It's like adding a tool in your toolbox to help you feel better. And that's the first step is being able to help you feel better so that you can then keep making better, healthy choices to go forward. And if you have well, somebody to help you with it, that makes it easier. I think examples always help people. And, and real quickly, um, you know, uh, ex-president Obama did a speech at Stanford about two weeks ago. And he was speaking about the uh, the importance that social media has played in actually the divisiveness of this country mm. and the fact that these companies are responsible. They're responsible for what gets out there and they need to take more responsibility. And he said, what's being pumped is sewage. And then I, he said sewage because it can confuse people enough to make inappropriate decisions to do things maybe even that example of yesterday. Yeah. So what he then went on to say, or I should say, I heard another young lady who's become quite famous. She literally was spending 14 hours a day on the internet, building her profile and got suicidal, came to a point where she was suicidal because of just listening to all the noise. I call it the noise, call it the sewage, the noise, whatever you want to listen to. And now has made a career of helping teenagers and young adolescents mm. actually get away from it, uh, divorce themselves from it, remove themselves from it. And I think this joy card, whether you're alone or you're in company with somebody, can be the greatest mental health solution that you can have. Because just taking time to reflect and not being influenced by somebody else outside their comment this is you writing, you journaling, you looking at a joy card and using it. And I think just for that reason, um, people need to grasp onto it. And as you know, we, we live in a world that's always on. Technology is created and helped to create this, what I call always on world. Um, and that's my comment here about the social media. 14 hours a day on social media, come on. Um, yeah. Speak, speak, <laughs> what? Wow. Can't imagine yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> speak with us about your joy card. Uh, tune in to tune out. Um, I think what I just said is probably the best reflection, but I want you guys to comment.
Because if we tune inside to tune out what else is there, we get to hear that voice of reason. We get to hear the voice of a higher power. We get to hear this voice that's speaking with us and that is encouraging us. And I think that, that I want to talk a minute because I know both of you understand this, just the power of the reprogramming the subconscious. Um, speak with us what you would about the tune in, tune out, and reprogramming our subconscious. Well, I think tuning out is very important, actually. <laughs> it just allows you to have a little silence um, because so much you don't really get, really understand what's actually going on out there until you have that silence. And it's amazing. Like we said, joy is so unexpected. You don't know what's going to happen until you stop, isn't it? It's that 15 minutes, even if it's for 15 minutes. And tuning out of um, social media is brilliant because, you, yeah, you get to connect with yourself, but you can also sleep better and, and, and have some quality time with the people you love. You know, it's so important. Isn't that right, Michelle? Absolutely. I, and I, I also think that we're, like you were just saying, Greg, it's, it, it's become an epidemic, right, of, of addiction to our technology and to the social media and checking in and seeing how many likes we get. And if we didn't get enough likes, then we feel bad about ourselves. And when we were talking about self-worth and self-love, it's really hard to keep your mental health about it when you're getting all this noise and sewage like you were saying earlier from people you don't really even know and yet somehow we've put all this emphasis outside of ourselves rather than coming back here and checking in with ourselves to say <clears throat> what do i really think what do i what do i care about what what matters to me and uh, what what does bring me joy what i i'm a human being just like the next person and so i deserve to have that time for myself. I give it to others. Why not take it for myself, even if it is just 15 minutes? And I, I think that if we, if we could take a little break, you know, from the, from the social media, that will help us uh, allow ourselves really to be that reflective human that we need to be in order to know <laughs> what we love what, and what brings us joy. And and what matters to us, if we don't ask those questions of ourselves, we can't really know. Then we're just taking in everybody else's opinion and kind of going along the flow of things rather than going, wait a second, do I want that? Do I care about that? So I, I what I do... you said, Michelle, about it not being an easy route, and it, and it isn't. And then for all my listeners, look, the three of us sitting here it hasn't always just been about us being joyous and happy all the time and That's everything's true. been primrose and whatever. <laughs> but the reality is, you know, self-love, you know, is so important. Um, and, you know, I, I keep thinking about kind of as you were speaking, you know, you look at maniacal Mr. Putin, if he'd only had a few more hugs uh, <laughs> during his lifetime, maybe he wouldn't be as maniacal and crazy as he is. You know, I think there's a lot of people that have deep wounds. And any of you listening out there who have these wounds that you're trying to heal, that have been there for a long time, and I'm not your psychologist, although I am, <laughs> I am a psychologist, I would say that you, that you really start to look at those and journal about them and, and get in community and talk to people and try and work through them. I think we'd have less of what happened yesterday if people were doing these kind of things. And, you know, um, you speak about forgiveness, both of ourselves and others, as a way to bring more joy into our lives. Um, I actually heard one of the women from Buffalo, a Black woman, say she didn't have it in her heart. I think it was her sister that got killed in the grocery store to say she's forgiven it, but she knew she had to forgive him. She even said on the news, I know I have to forgive this other soul. And I thought, man, what bravery, what just amazing thing to be able to know right now, it's hard for me to forgive, but I'm going to forgive. Um, what's the best way of letting go of our grievances and angers? And you speak about this in your guidebook and on card 14, 
titled Forgive. Um, I think this is a big thing in the world right now because we can't cross the divide unless we forgive. Because everybody looks at this divisiveness between people, whether it's Republican, Democrat, Independent, whatever party they're in or whatever they voted for and ever, and they're like, I'm right, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think it was the old, I want to say this, I forget it, men are from Mars, women are from Visa, Venus, you know? <laughs> And it, it was like, it, and I just did one called The Go-Giver Marriage with uh, Ann Mann. You know, it's interesting what they all say. And I think we all know this, but do we really know it? Mm -hmm. uh, because the ego gets in the way. It's like, would you rather be in love or would you rather be right? <laughs> and and that's, what, that's what John, what was his name? John something. And John Gray. John Gray used to say, would you rather be in love or would you rather be right? And that applies. Yeah. yeah. That applies to both a relationship and your relationship with yourself. Yes. Yeah. Because it's about self-love as well. So if you guys would talk about this forgive card, this is a big one. Yeah, I agree. It, it's it's one of the deepest cards we have in the deck. I will I will say that. It's forgiveness has so many benefits. And if we're we have to start with forgiving ourselves. We, 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 we hold on to old stuff that we did, regrets, things we said or did in our past that it's like literally like a weight that we've carried around with us, most of us. Mm -hmm. And if we have that weight, that weight shows up in the way that we respond and or get triggered by other things and other people and what's going on in the world. And oftentimes... I always, my, I can't remember who said it, but it's not about the chicken. You know, like when we get into an argument with somebody, it's never about usually what we're actually arguing about. It's usually has to do with something that happened who knows how long ago that we didn't resolve. Right. And so if we can resolve within ourselves first and forgive ourselves, then it makes it easier. And I'm not saying it's easy to do this because I've struggled with it. I've had various moments in time and I still work on one thing that I'm still I still feel like I have a thread left of, um, of feeling like I didn't do enough for my dad. And I know intellectually I did, but I, it's, it, it's, it's what matters is what's in here. Right. And so being able to really get to that place and allow yourself to forgive yourself is a great place to start. And then being able to do that with others and, and, and other situations, because the truth of the matter is, it's gone. It is in that most of these situations are already in the past. So why we're holding on to it isn't helping us. It isn't serving us. And it isn't helping anybody that we interact with. It, that cortisol that we were talking about earlier, when we're in resentment mode or anger or all of that, our cortisol is off the charts. Okay. And that doesn't help us make healthy choices for ourselves or for others. And so we're not doing ourselves any favors by carrying that around with us. And I think people, um, Lalomini, the people just want, they want respect. Mm -hmm. um, you can still disagree, but they still want respect. Um, and if you can respect somebody, it doesn't mean you can't disagree with their point of view, but you can still respect them. You literally can create in, in this as estimation, a place for forgiveness, mm. right? I think forgiveness, definitely, yeah. It's not, I mean, there is respect. You, you have respect for yourself, first and foremost, probably. And then mm. from there, you have respect for others. So you can treat people the way you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. And I think um, acceptance of a situation which you no longer have much control over is probably the best way you know it's about letting that go because you know yourself like michelle just said it's really not serving you it's not it's not doing you any good so the sooner you can move on from that particular scenario the better and um it's hard you can write it down you can send someone a letter um you can burn you can write it down and then burn it so that it's gone you know it's out it's gone it's forever gone there are different methods of how you might go about doing it, but um, 
really the only way you can move on and have a better life like that lady said you were just mentioning she knows that the only way she can move on and have a better life is to actually forgive yeah, and I and I think no matter what you do, whether it's these joy cards, or it's journaling, or it's a meditation or a mantra, or it's something you're repeating yourself, I think the key is all of these are tools to make it easier, mm -hmm. um, to make the path easier. And I think again, the joy cards are about easing you into a position to have an acceptance of joy in your life if you're not finding much joy there right now. Um, and, and you, you know, it's like um, fire starter. You have to spark somewhere. You know, you've yeah. got to spark somewhere. So why not spark with a lovely card on your desk, a uh, place to start, you know, or if, if you're into journaling and you don't want to buy these cards, they're not very expensive. You can get them on Amazon, including the guidebook, I think for like $18 or whatever it is. We're going to put a link to that. Now, ladies, we're going to leave the listeners with three takeaways uh, from working with the joy cards. And we will also put the link to this book as well. The 15 minute pause, even, even though you can say we didn't speak about it. We really did speak about it. We've been speaking about it for the last 45 minutes because every one of these joy cards is about taking a pause. It's about actually getting to a point of understanding what it is action you can choose to take to change your situation. Um, give us three takeaways from the joy cards and the benefits of the 15 minute pause, both emotionally, physically, and spiritually. I think for me, I would, I would start with, um, you have a choice. Everyone has a choice and joy is a choice. That is a takeaway for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'd like to add to that. I think that's the first step. And I also think that joy, joy is our right. We have, we have a right as human beings to feel joy filled and we need to take ownership of that. And take a step towards that each and every day and it doesn't take much time and it doesn't take millions of dollars and it feels good it feels good inside when you feel joy and that joy is contagious and so why not feel joy if you have kids out there i'm telling you as parents you need to go out and feel joyful because that joy is contagious to your kids it's like a little kid you know, opening up a gift uh, for their birthday or seeing a, a big birthday cake or a, a, a cat running around in circles and they're chasing their tail or whatever. These little simple things actually bring a smile to your face. They can make you laugh out loud and you just want to mark those moments. I mean, that's the time to go, yes, and have more of those moments. That's what I say. Be a joy spreader. Well, for That'll all of my... you, for all of you who are watching this on YouTube versus <laughs> listening to it, what I'd like you to do is look at our faces, look at Michelle's face, she's got a smile, look at Lalamini, and look at mine. <laughs> because and there I, is I a would... question around smiling. There's a card about <laughs> smiling. You, if you walk into a room with a smile, or at least that smile attitude, hmm. it's, it's contagious. So thank yeah. you both for being on Inside Personal Growth, spending uh, the last 45 minutes or so uh, engaging with me and my listeners. For all my listeners, we'll put a link to the joy cards, which you can get from Amazon. We'll put a link to the Energy Catalyst Group website. We will put a link also to the book, The 15-Minute Pause, which is by both of them as well. I'd say get this as a bundled package, put it together. You might as well have this pause, do yeah. your joy cards, and you're in for a good time and just enjoy it and then spread it as they said, you know, push it around to the rest of the world. Everybody needs more people that are having fun and having joy in their life around them um, because we have so much we could say that we're not so joyful about, but the reality is uh, we live in amazing times. I think if people look at it, even though we've got all this stuff happening and try and put yourself, raise yourself above the cloud and look into mm -hmm. the stratosphere of what is available. And there's so much available to us. And you two ladies have been a blessing to be available to my listeners 
during this last 45 minutes. Thank you both. Namaste. Thank you, Greg. Namaste. And can I just say, in case they want to have a joy, we do have a joy retreat potentially coming up. I saw that on your website. Is that going to be, I hope, a physical retreat? You can do those now. It is. It is. Now, you know, the only thing I will say, Lalami, the website is beautiful. There's four of you walking at the joy retreat, and there isn't one man in that picture. (laughs) You are welcome. You are welcome anytime. (laughs) So maybe you want maybe you want to add some guy in there somewhere. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Thank you guys. Thank you, Greg. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. Thank you very much.